Hello there, voice humans, and welcome to another episode of your replays. If you want to send me your replays, put them on my Discord server. Link to that in the description. And on the screen, we have the first protagonist of today, and that is the T110E4, with a username of... I, I can't pronounce that. But this vehicle, it works very well. It's a tank destroyer, but it has a traversable turret, sort of. High alpha damage, high penetration, and it does work well in a situation like this one. Now, ideally, I'll never recommend going to this side of the, the map in any case, because if the enemy is intelligent, they're going to avoid this side, they're going to surround you, and then you have the lost map control, and then you get attacked from two sides, and that's not really that great. But in this case, a large portion of the enemy team is here as well. And we do have two teammates out over there, and if they can get rid of that light tank, then... They can circle around the enemy team and attack the enemy team from two sides. We have the map control. It's kind of hard to lose. Then, and if you're in a disadvantage like here, then the best thing you can do is just not die. Don't YOLO too much. Look at I7 on the enemy team. He just YOLO too much. He expected his team to help him. I mean, I sometimes do that as well, where I just expect the team to actually do anything, but then they don't, and then I die. And that exactly happens to the I7 as well. You know, it's that kind of move that you make when you just don't care what's going to happen next. It's not ideal if you actually want to win the game. Now, a very nice position here. Obviously, the enemies, they can't really push forward. Uh, just controlling the flow of, of the battle here. Because right now, the rest of the team is coming around. Thangstra, the medium, that 268 is doing a pretty good job. He's just going to distract the enemy team right there. They have to watch out that there's a guy there. So what that means that they're going to be a lot less effective straight on here. Now, the team's IS-7 also dead. And now the kpz 50 t is dead. I just love medium tank players that go to the heavy side and then explode immediately. That's just enjoyable. But hey, at least he tried to get out of there, tried to play somewhere else, but he's dead now. You know, 4 versus 4, 3.5k damage already done. That's not too bad. And that object 268 is in a very good position because essentially it's distracting this, this part of the team here. And this is a very good move. Like, go around the outside. You don't want to just fight them head on. Because right now, that's if it's in heavy. You just shoot them in the side. Get free damage. Easy. Don't always just look at what's in front of you. Look, well, you should look what's in front of you, but also look at where you can find opportunities to do damage. Like, if you move to a different position, can you get a shot without being shot back? Can you have an opportunity to succeed better than you are in your current position? Or you just have an AMX-5120 that presents his rectum and promptly a e H E shell is lobbed right in there. That obviously does help quite a lot as well. Now in this case, the enemy grill, he's out all the way over there, which means focus on the Jagdpanzer right now. If the TNH uh, is the one that the Jagdpanzer is focusing on, you go for the Jagdpanzer. If the Jagdpanzer would focus on the E4 here, then the TNH would have to attack from the side. Basically, that's how you're going to do it. Always the tank that the enemy isn't looking at is the one that peaks, because that's how you do damage without getting damaged. Now, the grill has repositioned, saw that perfect opportunity, and now he's put a myth Mythodron. Is that how it works? I don't know. Put him very low HP, which is not very helpful because the grill is still full HP, but he's a paper tank. So, what has to happen now? E4, object 268, play together. Again, approach the grill from two different sides so that whenever the grill peaks, he doesn't have a shot, but he is going to get shot. From the other side. Now, unfortunately, the object 268 kind of didn't get the memo and he just yellows forward. And uh, there is a reason the vehicle is called the Bobject in World Tanks PC, and even though it's nowhere near as good as it in World Tanks PC, it can have its tendencies for people to yellow in it. So, in this case, again, you would want to approach from two different sides. That's not really all that possible here. Nice HE shot, but the grill, it's very accurate. He got his shot in and out. The 268 had a problem. But he somehow still managed to kill the grill, so we're just going to skip over that because you can't see it in the replay. And now we go to a very good medium tank, the STB-1. Because this vehicle, 3,300 DPM, 11 degrees of depression, only 330 alpha, kind of annoying. It really doesn't make any sense why Wargaming just changed all the alpha damage with 105mm guns instead of just keeping them at 150 to make it sort of easy for new players to learn. They just changed the alpha damage all over the place. But uh, here we are. Anyway. This vehicle has a very strong turret, has 11 degrees of gun depression. So guess where this vehicle works and guess where you have to play it to get the maximum performance out of it. Right, on a hill, hull down, the hull is pretty much paper. I mean, the upper plate is very well sloped. 
but the rest of the hull is nothing there. Now here's the thing about a vehicle like this. If you're in a bad spot, you have the mobility to get out of that spot. It's a really weird thing I notice about a lot of medium tank players is that if they're in a bad situation where they have to fight one or two tanks at the same time, they just stay there and fight. You just get away. Like, if you're in a fight that doesn't benefit you being in it, that's another skill to eventually develop to understand, okay, am I going to win this fight or am I going to get my ass handed to me? If you're in a fight that doesn't benefit you, that doesn't result in you being the victor, you get away from that. You get out of that. You remove yourself from that situation if you can. If you can't, well, you have to fight. In this case, the eyes 8 is uh, doing this great plan of rushing into three tanks at once without any backup. But backup arrives just right there in the form of this Batcher. Very nice focus of the air. There's no point continuing to look on the eyes 8 here because this Batcher now is the bigger threat and also the easier target because he just unloaded, which means it's going to take quite a while to get that clip back. He also doesn't seem to know how to drive. I mean, he has driving skills, the level of mine. And the, yeah, like he's the easier target right now because by the time that guy reloads, you've already pumped two shells into him and you can finish him off before he even like gets another reload off or maximum one shot. Perfect situation right there. That Batcher completely overestimated the situation and very well played by the STB here. And the RSA... Well, he's down the hill, he's against the Sheridan and a STB, and he's completely screwed now. So, yeah, if you're that bad chat, why? Just why? Like, I assume he was hoping that nobody's gonna go and catch him, but that's the problem with bad chat. Like, it's a great tank if nobody fights you. If somebody fights you, like an STB, you can't have a big problem. In this case, that Sheridan's just, like, bleh. the Sheridan almost lost against the ISA, which you have to credit him. That's an achievement. Like, sometimes it is truly an achievement to lose a battle or to lose a fight that you should have won 99% of cases. That sometimes can be a true achievement. Now that IS-7 down there is getting gangbanged, so he's not going to live for very long. The Sheridan's low, but STB still has a lot of its hit points remaining, and that is exactly what you want in a situation like this. If you see your team falling apart, you can do one of two things. You can take a risky move, go in there, see if it pays off, probably isn't going to, or you're gonna set back. You're gonna relax, you're gonna reserve your hit points, you're gonna wait, see what happens, you're gonna find yourself some damage, and while your teammates collapse, you're gonna sit there, you're gonna farm the enemy team, and if you do that well enough, you might even have enough hit points remaining at the end, and the enemies might be low enough hit points that you can win a three versus four or whatever. So, don't YOLO in when you're in a disadvantage, right? Preserve your hit points, take it back a little bit. Remember, fight when you win, don't fight when you don't win, right? That's how that works. You don't have to shoot and attack every single tank you see. You only attack the ones that are useful too, right? Like if you're gonna win, you go for it. If you don't win, let somebody else handle it, basically. Yep, two versus three. Not really that great. 268 is camping in the background. Somebody's capping, which in a way does make sense. Uh, they do have a light tank, but against a full HP STB, I wouldn't want to be in this situation, especially that full health Jagdpanzer back there. That is also still online. There's not going to be a very easy way for the enemy team to get anything out of this. Now, don't rush it, though. Like, sure, you see the cap circle going up. Dumb idea here will be in the SP just... Run out the cap circle and find out what's happening. But no, wait. Find out the 268. He's making that exact mistake. He's rushing forward into an STB. He has a massive hit point disadvantage. Yes, the ML's attacking now as well, but they're not playing together. Right? Like, this object is currently engaging the STB long before the ML has even arrived. And now the object's dead. Now the ML arrives. So, terrible team play from the enemy team here. An absolutely wonderful execution from the STB. That is the kind of enemy team that you want that rush you one by one. Right, and if you're the enemy at this point, the 268, just wait for the ML to arrive. You can fight him from two sides. He either has to run or he's completely screwed. But like this, first focus on the 268, the 268 completely throws away. And now you can even use the 268 as a shield against the ML. That is lovely. And on top of that, the ML has a lot less DPM than the STB, so 
On a fight like this, where it's both flat ground, which means that every shot is likely to penetrate, the Emil is in a massive disadvantage, because even though he does have more alpha damage, he's not going to get the DPM out, and if he's going to get traversed like that, he's going to get screwed as well! God damn, this enemy is dumb. Don't be the enemy. Be the STP. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Goodbye.